Living during these times, awake to what is going on in this world, has to be one of the most challenging things many of us have ever done. We are up against so many obstacles and challenges as we try to keep our minds focused on our Messiah and not allow ourselves to get trapped up in the ways and mindsets of this world. We have to be so strategic in our comings and goings. We have to be so mindful on the things that we consume because so many things in this world, from our entertainment to our education, our religious traditions, etc., are so tainted by the God of this world with him attempting to lead us into false worship of him and have us moving away from walking in the covering of our Messiah. I mean, we have to be so intentional in our ways of daily living and make sure that we are not allowing ourselves or our families who we are responsible for to not fall in deceptive traps meant to bog us down into sin. We do this while we see the rest of the world living so carefree. Most people not concerned at all in the direction this world is heading and doesn't have a clue on what is actually coming to this world. And because of those attitudes and because of our faith and conviction, we are dealing with the struggles of trying to communicate with these same friends and family that do not see the world in the way that we see it. They don't get it. No matter how many times we try to communicate with them, we send them messages, they ignore it. We send them links and clips to videos just like this they don't watch them. You try to talk to them about certain issues, they get angry with you, or they act indifferent towards what you're speaking about like they don't care, or they act as if you're crazy and you need help. It is very challenging being a believer during these deceptive times. As believers, we see and know that the world system is lying to everyone, and it is directing the masses towards judgment in the lake of fire. The world is using the masses to create enough spiritual demonic energy that gives the enemy enough power to eventually be worshipped. We see all the lies they are telling, all the false schemes that they are plotting, and we have decided not to participate. And while we are not participating, we are pleading with the others that we know to not participate as well. But it just seems as if our words are falling on deaf ears. It is very sad and extremely difficult. I mean, for instance, when we think about today, how many of us have been warning our friends and family about this inflation and coming food shortage, telling them that they need to prepare for problems that are coming, telling them that the economy is not strong and we are on the verge of an economic collapse? We've been explaining and saying these same words for months, even years, trying to warn and prepare those we know and love. And now at this time that we're in, where things are so bad, when gas prices have reached historic levels. I have to get a set for another job just to pay for gas. When we have continuous shortages on items of necessity, and it is reported that we are being warned that we're due to have a food shortage crisis in the near future, at a time when we see the stock market tanking daily. All of these things happening that we were warning of, but these same people we were talking to and warning don't even correlate our words of warning with what is going on and so they still don't make any changes or repent. I mean, it's really frustrating. It's not easy. And if this is you dealing with these struggles, I know that it can be very hard to deal with. I want you to know that you are not alone with this. These are just some of the challenges we face as believers who are not asleep. For me, I often look at all of us as modern day Noahs. We have been foretold of Yah's coming judgment, and he has been working through us to not only prepare for ourselves, but to warn the people. But the sad truth is that many of the people that we know will receive the same fate the mockers and scoffers did during Noah's time. It's a hard reality to accept, I know, but it is reality. And so this is why many of us tirelessly fight to communicate and wake up our family and friends, all the way to the point of losing these relationships. We are modern day Noah's preparing for Yah's judgment. And you must understand that this life can be challenging, but it will be extremely rewarding as long as you keep moving forward and overcome. This week, I just want to encourage you and let you know that you are not alone. You are blessed and highly favored. Yes, there are challenges of being a modern day Noah, but don't let that stop you or slow you down. You must continue to walk strong in your faith to prepare your ark and warn those who are in your path. And in the end, you will be saved. Be encouraged. Let's begin. 
Okay, so when looking at these times, it's always important to have the right biblical perspective. This world really wants to distract us and make us believe that things we are dealing with today are not biblical, but just all secular events pertaining to government, money, and our society. But as believers, we have a firm belief in the word of Yah, and we know he has prophesied that the world is heading in the direction of judgment and that it will lead to much greater challenges in the future. When talking to his apostles in Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39, our Messiah described the last days like this. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. When we look back at scripture, when we're reviewing the days of Noah, we can find many similarities to our life and the life of Noah. Going back to Genesis chapter six. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born to them, that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they took wives from themselves of all who they chose. And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of Elohim came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then Yahuwah saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And Yahuwah was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And Yahuwah said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahuwah. That's Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. Skip it to verse 13. And Elohim said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then verses 17 and 18. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh, which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. You see, during those times, the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every intent of their hearts was evil continuously. They were only thinking about wickedness and evil. They were so bad that he was sorry that he made them. All flesh was corrupt. The earth was filled with violence through them. Though we don't know all the details, obviously, it's really hard to imagine that they could be any worse than the people are today. Think about the world today. The world is filled with violence. We consume it daily on our televisions and in the movies. The people are numb to it. There's some new hashtag out or saying that says, choose violence, or I chose violence today, something like that. I choose violence. It's just another display of the wickedness in the hearts of our society. The hearts of the people have gone cold, and the people rather kill and destroy than love. Vengeance is always on their heart. And then leaving out violence, this generation today are completely narcissistic, consumed with the love for themselves before anything else, especially our creator. I mean, go on Instagram, and you'll see the same pictures and poses from millions of people. A collection of narcissism made to look normal but it's completely idolatrous. Back in the ancient days, people were worshiping carved images, but today people are worshiping themselves. People don't have time for our creator because they are consumed with themselves, their hair, their teeth, their clothes, their material possessions. And after they work all that out, a small majority will try to fit father in somewhere, while the rest don't even want to hear about him at all. It's all about their goals and their plans, nothing about his will. People just don't understand that we are created beings. We did not just form ourselves on this earth by our own thoughts. We were made by our creator and it's him that we are in service to and should be in submission of. But in these days, 
he is not even a thought in the minds of people today. They want to submit to a God in the way they desire him to be. They are reshaping and rebranding their own God, making a Burger King type of God, one that they have their way. They are making a world that they are placing all the gods together and telling us that they are all the same, but they are not. There is one higher, the most high. But today, there is no dependence on our creator. It's all about each individual person's ability and the power of their mind. Yes, that secret, that new age deception doctrine has been spread amongst the masses, making them feel that they are in more control than they actually are, while they completely block out their true creator. They are dependent upon government leaders and organizations. These are their sources, not Yah. The ones who will fix their problems. And if these leaders and organizations do not fix it, they take their own power and go to the streets and demand change. People never care about our creator and what he says about the direction of this world. Even those who call themselves followers of him, or are in fact following religion instead of following him. This is what we see today. More people depending on science and chemicals rather than dependence on the most high. We are in a world filled with lust. When rappers are literally making pornographic material in their music and is played on the mainstream radio. Where stores and business owners will play this debauchery in their places of business because it's just normal. They play same-sex relationships in our children's entertainment and make it normal. We live in a time where sex, money, and drugs sell and positive role models are not in existence. A time where war is consistently provoked and people cheer it on. A time where our leaders talk in constant division and hate. They talk about bringing people together at the same time as they bring their opposition down. A time where everyone is being provoked to anger. We are in a time when love and hate mean something different than it did in the past. Where loving someone is now considered hate. Where evil is considered good and good considered evil. A culture where people have been conditioned to say, I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it. A world where people are sedated by unknown drugs where they are in an unknowing state of hypnosis, a world where they are connected to mind-numbing devices that take away their power to think and be an individual. It's a world that has replaced our creator with a god of self, and that god of self will eventually be replaced with a false messiah whom the world will worship as god. That is the world today, a world that does not want to hear about the truth, the way, and the life. And as believers, we are living in this world, sounding off warnings and trying to get people to repent. But for so many of us, it is disheartening because it seems that our words are just not getting through and the people that we love are just in the clutches of the enemy and they refuse to pry him loose. So for us, it is challenging because we know what is coming to them. We know the fate that awaits them if they do not change. But instead of them understanding that we are continually talking to them because we actually love them, they reject us and desire confrontation or separation or give out emotional abuse. It is just very difficult speaking with many of them. Please know you are not alone in this and this is not something that is special to only you. This is something that we all deal with and face. Like I said, Noah dealt with the same thing. That's why I draw the comparison of us as modern day Noahs. The book of Jasher is a more detailed account of what happened during the days of Noah when Noah was warning the people. Jasher chapter 5 verses 22 to 24 says, In that time, Yahuwah said to Noah and Methuselah, Stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men in all the words that I spoke to you in those days. Perchance they may turn from their evil ways, and I will then repent of the evil and will not bring it. And Noah and Methuselah stood forth and said in the ears of the sons of men all that Elohim has spoke concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken, neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations. And this is likened to us, just in a different way. Yah gave us his word and prophesied to us what is coming to this world. He told us all we need to know to understand him and his desire for us. He told us how people would be in the last days. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 
unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. And this prophecy has been validated and fulfilled. This is what we are dealing with today. And we are out here warning about where this world is heading and the judgment that is coming because our creator has forewarned us. And just like the generation of people who Noah was warning responded is exactly how people of today respond. They do not hear us or give our warnings true consideration. They just continue moving deeper in their sins and aligning themselves with the fate of this world. Noah dealt with this just as we are. Can you imagine it for him though? Because he was truly alone. You are not. Maybe you are physically, but we are all scattered around the world given the same messages from Father, the same urgency placed on our spirit. We are all living with the same convictions. We are not alone like Noah was. And like Noah did, we will do as well. Noah did as Yah commanded him and did not follow the rest of the sinners. We are all at a time and place when it is truly crunch time for everyone. We are at a time and place where we know the enemy just wants us to give up. He wants us to be like the rest. He wants to discourage you. He wants you to feel defeated. He wants you to be scared. He wants you to live in fear of him and his plans for this world. But I made this video to tell you, you will not do this. You will not live like that. You will overcome. The devil is a created being, and he knows his time is short, and all he desires is to take you down with him. Always know and remember, no matter what comes your way, if you are in Messiah, you have won. The victory is yours. You have crowns awaiting you. You have a mansion prepared for you. Like Messiah said in John chapter 14, verses 1-4, through four, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Elohim, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. That is a wonderful promise. Hold on to that promise. Do not allow this world and what is coming to bring you strife or feelings of fear and anxiety. Do not allow this generation of people to bring you sadness or steal your joy. In John chapter 16 verse 33, Yahushua said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want you, who is living as a modern day Noah, to walk in peace and in joy. Do not let the enemy steal your joy and your peace. If you are in Messiah, you must live through his spirit. You must bear his fruits. You are a modern day Noah because you recognize the power of Yah and you submit to it. And you desire that the rest of the world does as well. You desire that your family and friends submit to his will and live amongst him. And this is noble. But you also must understand that not everyone will do so. I have struggled personally with this understanding for years, and it was the struggle of dealing with this that led me to this ministry. The desire to help my family and friends come out of this world and be saved. But over the years, Yah really had me understand something that we all need to understand, and I'll tell you what it is. Not everyone is His. Not everyone has a heart for Him. If they do not love him sincerely, he will not lay the burden on them to come with him and live in praise of him for eternity. Everyone is responsible for their own choices, and so everyone will not be saved. It will not be everyone that will understand these messages. Not everyone will truly come to him, and many people will not enter into the ark. There may be people that you may be struggling with them and praying for them to come to an understanding. Let me say this clearly. Do not give up on anyone. Do not feel defeated by the enemy. But it is very important 
that you do not let their rejection or their rebellion to affect you, to wear you down, to make you rethink your walk, to make you question your faith, to make you walk more in the flesh. You cannot let the rebellion of others stop you from preparing yourself for Father. This is a time where much conviction and strength is needed. You need strength, and it is not strength that will come from you. This is a time where we all must give the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, reigns over our lives and allow him to direct us, to lead our paths. If you are a modern day Noah, you should not fear the end times and judgment coming to this world. Whatever is coming our way, Yah will provide and handle. There are often many questions about if a person should do this or should a person do that. I cannot answer these questions because I do not know. I do not know what Father has planned for us individually. I just know that He loves us, and if we dwell in Him and submit to Him, we will be fine. Now it does not mean that we will not like what is coming. Even before Messiah was about to be taken and sacrificed for us, He asked Father if He was willing to take that cup from Him, saying, Father, if it is Your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That's Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are believers, and we must walk in a mindset of not my will, but yours be done, Yah. As we walk during these days, only think about Yah's will. Only think about how your life is in service to him. Don't worry about what he's going to do for you. Concern yourself and what you are going to do for him how you're going to serve him, how you're going to help bring about his will. This is the reason when Yahushua told us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When Yah saved Noah, he was judging the world because it dwelled in wickedness. Like I showed earlier, the hearts of men only considered evil and wickedness. By carrying out the flood, he was judging their sin. And after he did this, he said he would never judge the earth through that method of flood again, which is actually what the symbol of the rainbow represents. It is a covenant that Yah made with all flesh. Just as he judged the world before in the days of Noah, he will judge it again, but it will be different this time. And it is your responsibility to prepare yourself and your household. It is your responsibility to bear his fruit and not allow the enemy to steal your peace and your joy. It is your responsibility to be an example of his righteousness to the world. It is very difficult living during these times. I understand this. And it is promised that these days will get harder, not easier. But I promise you that those who dwell in Yah are protected and comforted. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahuwah, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield. And your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made Yahuwah, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. 
I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. That's Psalms chapter 91. Always read that and let that assure you and comfort you. Yahusha told us that these last days will be like the last days of Noah to prepare us for dealing with it. He wants us to understand that people will not be ready for him. We unfortunately know that people will go down with this world. We unfortunately know that people will see things when it is too late for them, just as they did in the days of Noah. They rejected his warnings until the flood started. And all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on the account of the rain, for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth, and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark. And the sons of men assembled together, about 700,000 men and women, and they came unto Noah to the ark. And they called to Noah, saying, Open for us, that we may come to thee in the ark. And wherefore shall we die? And Noah said with a loud voice, answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not all rebelled against Yahuwah, and said that he does not exist? And therefore Yahuwah brought upon you this evil, to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. Is not this thing that I spoke to you of 120 years back? And you would not hearken to the voice of Yahuwah? And now do you desire to live upon earth? And they said to Noah, We are ready to return to Yahuwah. Only open for us that we may live and not die. And Noah answered them, saying, Behold, now that you see the trouble of your souls, you wish to return to Yahuwah? Why did you not return during these hundred and twenty years, which Yahuwah granted you as a determined period? But now you come and tell me this on account of the troubles of your souls. Now also Yahuwah will not listen to you, neither will he give ear to you on this day, so that you will not now succeed in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in on the account of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And Yahuwah sent all the beasts and animals that stood around the ark, and the beasts overpowered them and drove them from that place. And every man went his way, and they scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. That's Jasher chapter 6, verses 16 through 25. You see, people did not listen or desire repentance until it was too late. And unfortunately, this will be the same today. You have to deal with this reality for some people and not let it bog you down and affect your walk with Yah. Noah was preaching repentance for 120 years. Even as he was building, he was telling the people to hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, and they ignored him. They saw him building the ark in preparation for this flood, but they thought him to be crazy, more than actually hearing from our father. Exactly like today. You're also dealing with many people that understand that Yah will judge this place, but they just think that this judgment is far off from now. They're not expecting him. It's as in the days of Noah. As believers living in this world, we obviously are not in the majority. But the powerful thing is that all of us believers around the world are preaching the same message of repentance, stressing the importance of submission to the Most High, telling the people that judgment is coming. But the people aren't listening. They are eating and drinking, getting married, partying, Toasting it up to the good life. They don't want to hear about what Yah says. And they think people like us that are giving these warnings are crazy. That people that make videos like this are crazy. And people like you who watch them are just as crazy. We are preparing ourselves for our Father, our Creator. Our hearts, our minds, our souls are our ark. And we are getting them prepared for the storm coming. And the rest of the world thinks we are crazy and paranoid. But we are not any of those things. Let me say it again. The truth is that, just as in the days of Noah, the storm is coming. And the truth is that, when many see it, they will remember the warnings and beg our Father to help them. They will want to come in the ark that they once thought was foolish and naive. This is an unfortunate reality that many of us must come to terms with. They will say the same things just like they said in the days of Noah. We are ready to return to Yahuwah, only open for us that we may live and not die. But for many, it will be too late. 
So let me end this message with this message to all different groups. In these times, you really need to come to terms with who you are. Are you Noah, one who is being faithful and obedient to our creator? Or are you the other people who laughed and mocked him and were disobedient to our father? Or maybe you're straddling the fence and not fully on one side or the other. Let me talk to that group first. If you say, yeah, that's me. I'm between both sides. I'm straddling. I recognize the times that we're in and I'm trying to submit to father, but I'm just weak. Let me say this plainly to you. You need to get strong and stop straddling the fence. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. He will not accept you being lukewarm because please understand that's all that straddling the fence is. It's being lukewarm and he will spit you, vomit you out of his mouth. He does not want your indecision to follow him or not. Either you love him and trust him or you don't. There is no middle ground. And if you try to stay in that middle, you will not be accepted by him. Stop playing games and get serious. It's all about who you desire more, what you desire more. Make a serious decision and commit to him. Put away your love for this world. Remember these words. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of Elohim abides forever. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 15-17. through 17. Remember it. Apply it. Make it a part of your life. If you are the other people who were laughing and mocking and being disobedient to our father, I really plead with you to turn from these evil ways. You are a created being. You must submit to your creator, not the creation. You have been blinded and distracted by many lies and you must come into the truth before it's too late. This goes for you and those that are lukewarm. Nothing and no one is worth being separated from our creator and being judged harshly by him. Whatever or whoever is in your way of this must be taken out of the picture. Get rid of your idols. Your job and priority is to know and submit to the Most High. And you can only come to Him through Yahusha. You must get this right and start building your ark in overdrive. And lastly, to the people who this video was made for. If in these last days you are being obedient and faithful to our Father, and you find yourself most like Noah... You are a modern day Noah. Let me say this with the most conviction. Do not stop. Keep going. Overcome. Stay obedient and faithful and keep our father and his will first. He is very consistent with that message. He loves you and he wants you to continue to make yourself ready for him. Continue to read his word. Stay in fellowship with him. Obey his commands. Live through his ways and doctrines. Live holy, set-apart lives that are always ready for him when he comes. Do not let the ways of this world beat you down or discourage you. Walk in power and in faith and in love. Our Father has said to me, As in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. So the only question I have for you is, If we were in the days of Noah... Who would you be? Be a modern day Noah and be ready for our father. Make that the ultimate priority today. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like and share this video with others. I thank you for your patience with this message. I am not in my usual recording location and the audio may be a little off. I thank you for your understanding. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. Thank you for watching. I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you especially to those Elohim has placed it on your hearts to give 
and you have done so. Thank you and your assistance in carrying out this ministry every week. Thank you for your blessings and your prayers. They truly support this ministry. You have no idea. Thank you for your obedience to Yah's call on your heart. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Be a modern-day Noah and overcome. I love you all.